excited for the opportunity today uh, to share with our, our friends at Intermountain Division um, the ways in which I think your leadership really came to, to understand Onboard to be a real framework, a digital framework, something to really help streamline each and every one of you uh, as an organization to achieve you know, certification across the National Standards of Excellence. Um, but I think you'll, you'll quickly see as individuals who will, will be using this hopefully day by day, uh, the ways in which Onboard really is going to drive your own personal volunteer efforts, simplify the ways in which you know what needs to get done, uh, and allow uh, leadership at the organizational level and leadership at the division level to really see clearly, have a lot of transparency into uh, what you guys are doing day to day to support the Salvation Army and its mission, um, and continue to work towards certification toward the National Standard of Excellence. So glad to have you all with us today. Let's let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. So just a matter of today's goals, uh, I'm just going to kind of re kind of bring us back around on board just to help everybody, uh, especially those of our friends who uh, are a little less familiar, didn't see our presentation a few weeks ago. What is on board? Uh, what does it mean to use technology to drive governance and volunteer board service? Um, I want to do a quick review of the National Standards of Excellence, not a heavy handed review, just a kind of a light overview. And, and the reason why is what we're going to do is if, once we've kind of taken stock of that, the value of the national standards. Uh, and really what they mean, what they're intended, uh, the motivations and behaviors that are intended uh, to, to inspire in all of you, we're gonna look at quite literally a single page uh, within the board management solution on board, what we call our dashboard, uh, where I've provided a few ways to help you, I think really draw a lot of connections to the standards of excellence and what you guys are gonna be doing day to day, what you're doing today, but just having a centralized digital home to really represent all that you're doing and, and hold your organizations more accountable. Okay, hopefully we've got a little time for Q&A. Uh, if, that, if that allows us to dig a little bit deeper into the solution, great. Um, but I will be walking through kind of what you guys can expect uh, as, as onboard users in the future, kind of where we stand today in implementation, what you can expect to see going forward. Oops, sorry about that, scroll down. So once again, just to reintroduce on board, sorry about that, guys, I have a sensitive mouse. Um, you know, we are a technology company that is really here to help nonprofits just simplify and streamline governance, right? What that allows us to do is to work a little bit more effectively together, but helps our organizations, help volunteers really most importantly focus on the mission and accelerate the impact that you guys are seeking to make with uh, Salvation Army every single day, right? So we do that by making board meetings really, really simple really secure, really effective, very, very uncomplicated, right? So the, the nuts and bolts of governance simplifying that, right? We're helping to transform nonprofit board communication and collaboration. You'll see a few ways in which uh, news and announcements about your own specific advisory organization, about the Intermountain Division on the whole, ways we can be better communicating with one another and at the, at the organizational level as well. Um, and Onboard is really proud to be innovating every single day. And when I when I say that, I mean that um, in my demos, in my demonstrations over the last few weeks with uh, a few prospective clients, even I've seen developments within the solution I had to kind of learn on the fly, which is fun. I mean, it just really speaks to me about a company who's here to innovate, really find really powerful ways to help you guys uh, feel empowered in your own volunteer service. And ultimately helping today's leaders create a better world. I mean, I think that's ultimately ultimately bottom line. That's why we all do uh, what we do. And, and the technology itself is designed. Some of you may remember the slide from our, our uh, uh, rally in Denver. It's about serving smarter, not harder, right? Embracing technology, what technology can offer you as foot soldiers, as those on the ground doing the work uh, to embrace technology and help you in your own volunteer service and really drive effective governance organizations within the Salvation Army. So again, it's about strategic forward-looking board discussions, right? It's about more engagement with your fellow, with your peers in your advisory organizations, as well as with leadership, right? It's about being at, being better organized, being better prepared board members and being more transparent as an organization and allowing you guys to do it simply, right? So re reducing administrative meeting preparation, reducing time uh, to share really important updates and news and, and ways that people can be plugging into their communities and, and serving the Salvation Army more effectively. Right, and what we see, right, clients of ours tend to uh, be using tons and tons of disparate solutions. Everything from you know DocuSign to get things signed to use a Slack channel to communicate with each other, as well as the uh, ongoing reply all email chain that we often get. 
um, as well as central locations for documents. Could be, you know, could be OneDrive, could be Microsoft SharePoint, could be a Google Drive. You know, we're all using a, a variety of different things. So what, it, what a really good board management solution offers and what I contend Onboard certainly offers is truly that one source of truth, that one central location where everybody can access information that they need quickly, easily, uh, and securely. Okay. So with that, uh, what I'd like to do is just kind of, like I said, we're going to review just very briefly, very briefly. And I see, oh, that was a prior suit from Denver Auxiliary. Uh, hello, Sue, again. Um, I want to just kind of talk about the national standards of excellence as a, as a means to an end, right? And then kind of review what these standards look like. So when, when you think about why Salvation Army would embark on this mission to get every organization certified against these national standards, what that says to me is an organization that is being strategic, thoughtful, and mindful about encouraging behaviors within their advisory organizations that lead to success, that lead to mission impact, right? And so what we're going to look at today is as I promised, a one single, uh, one single corner of this of this cloud-based solution, where you're going to get glimpses into a ton of the variety of things that the Salvation Army is asking each advisory organization to certify against. Right. So a couple ways to do this, as we all recall, right? There are a series of about ten various sort of workflows, documentation points, exercises, tasks, and 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 to dos. Right. By which, if we accomplish a certain subset of them, we become certified at that silver level. Right. And that, that ranges everything from making sure that as an organization, you can prove that we have met a minimum of four times each year and that each board member has met and attended at least two of those meetings. Right. Or making sure that our groups include at least a certain subset of advisory members within each board or, or advisory council. Right. And has a way for us to, to meaningfully track engagement across events, fundraising activities, those kinds of things. If we as an organization achieve a certain a certain subset of these standards. Right. We then qualify in our certification process as a as a silver level advisory organization. Similarly, as we all know, these, I think, represent sort of deeper layers of commitment as an advisory organization in terms of achieving what we call that gold standard. Right. So again, you know, we're all thinking about how we can contribute more meaningfully to the Salvation Army, whether it's by soliciting other friends or corporations for, for contributions, completing really important sort of thoughtful self-evaluations on a, on a specific cadence to make sure that we as volunteers are achieving our, our best in our, uh, in, in, our, in our designs around what we want our volunteer service to be. Right, and even that our council or board has adopted and, and is following a leadership sex succession plan and or strategic plan. So these are all things that um, if we can simply execute on all of these various standards, if we can find easier ways to document and execute on them, right? By and large, what's gonna happen is that the process of certifying becomes much easier, but it's easier to accomplish all these goals as well. And that's where I want everyone to understand what onboard is, is why I think leadership, why I believe leadership feels like onboard is the best solution for the entire organization from the ground up to make sure that each organization who really does seek to certify against these has the opportunity uh, and, and the means by which and the resources and the framework by which uh, to, to do that. So exciting stuff. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump right in. So I'm going to switch over my screen. I expect my friends on the onboard side will shout at me if it comes to pass that that screen didn't switch. But until then, I will I will proceed. So so guys, welcome welcome to onboard. Um, I, I know this left a lot of questions in the rally a few weeks ago, um, and I think a lot of folks yearning to see a little bit more. And that's what I'm hoping to provide today. Um, I want you to understand what this session is 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 intended to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a tease in in some in some respects um this will not be a full-blown demonstration um but i want you to see some very specific things and i as i promise about this one sort of page this landing page that you're seeing here um some things that i think will really catch your eye and make you think huh yeah i mean based on those national standards of excellence i can really draw connections and, and linkages between what this technology will offer us and how we can manage to get our advisory organizations to a, to a much more effective and better place. Okay, so that's what this is about. There is an FAQ session toward the end. Guys, I encourage you certainly to uh, use that liberally, 
um, in that webinar chat, there's an opportunity to ask questions. I think there's a Q&A feature in here as well, which as I'm thinking about it, let me go ahead and open that up in case I don't miss any. Okay, excellent. Uh, and so during that FAQ, if we've got a little bit of time, great. I'm, I'm happy to uh, dig in a little bit deeper, um, but let's get to it. So guys, welcome to Onboard. Um, as, as mentioned, I think during the session, um, and, and as is everything these days, this is a cloud-based solution. Um, for, for those of you who are, are truly what I will fondly call and respectfully call foot soldiers within these advisory organizations, um, those who are not sort of administering from a higher level, those who are, are relying on this to be that single source of truth. So the recommendation is, is always going to be for each and every one of you. And I can see some eye rolls you know, in the back of the head already. Um, guys must have to, in my view, download when it's time to do so Onboard's mobile app. So there is a very, very good reason, um, you know, why the salvation felt strongly about onboard, and a lot of that, a lot of that, I think, was attached to the mobile extension extensiveness of what this solution offers. And that app is really for a board member what ends up being the most convenient, the easiest way to access onboard the materials within and the tasks and meetings that you guys are being asked to participate in and invite in. Okay, so number one, mobile application. Um, what we're going to see is, of course, the desktop application. And where we've landed here today, right, is going to be our dashboard. Anytime anybody logs into the onboard app, whether that's here on your computer or on your mobile device, what you are introduced to is this dashboard. And so what I've started to sort of fondly, uh, fondly refer to the dashboard as is, is really onboard now. Think of it as my advisory organization. Like, what is my now? What are the things I need to be focusing on now. It's been a long week at work. I'm sitting down on a Saturday morning and I want to get caught up. Okay. So the, the, the dashboard does a really good job of just exactly that. Okay. When I log into the dashboard, I'm just going to give you a quick tour because uh, there's going to be a couple of little panels here on this landing page that you're, I want to call your attention to. So of course, we're going to get communication from the very, very top down things that the Salvation Army wants to be presenting to you, sharing with you. This can be a, like a sort of a news panel for organizational, really important tidbits. Uh, of course, you see here, this word would be where they're just thanking you for service and making sure you're aware of different ways that you can serve. You're going to see a lot of different little hyperlinks throughout this dashboard that is going to lead you to some important places. Okay. So that's number one. As I scroll down, of course, you notice I've got a really quick glimpse at an upcoming meeting for whatever advisory committee uh, that I serve on and whatever's coming. So again, on board now, what do I need to know about what meetings are upcoming? What's on the, what, what holds in the future? And of course you can see this would be a, a committee meeting that's taking place right now. So as I jump in, I can do a couple things right here. I, you, you know, Salvation Army is gonna be connecting or your advisory organization is gonna be connecting your virtual conferencing tools to onboard. So I can jump right into the Zoom right from my dashboard right? I can go ahead, pull open the board packet. What are the things we're going to be reviewing right in front of my screen? So I've literally logged in and with one click, I'm not just visiting with a meeting, but I'm getting, I'm getting access to the materials, right? And of course, I'm, use, I'm leveraging this to prepare for that upcoming meeting as well. So if we're, if we've given these information, we've got about a week to prepare, I'm going to be able to come to this dashboard and quickly access the materials for that meeting. So I can come to the meeting feeling great, feeling prepared, and off we go. So as it relates to meetings, right, any upcoming relevant meetings here in your dashboard, of course, if I want to dig a little bit deeper to maybe what other organizations are doing, other meetings that are taking place, I can have visibility into what's happening, but I can't see those meeting materials. But know that there's another little kind of a corner of onboard where I can explore what meetings are taking place. And from an administrative level, leadership is going to be able to see what things are happening and taking place, who is attending, and who's getting involved at, at, per the meeting minutes. Okay, so meeting minutes or uh, uh, upcoming meetings for your group, number one. And of course, as we think back to those national standards, standards of excellence, when you when it's time to kind of prove the point that your organization has been conducting these meetings, taking diligent meeting minutes and notes, uh, and, and achieving the attendance uh, metrics that are expected of you as part of the certification process, this is where everything is going to live in one place, both as a user, as a meeting attendee, and as a leadership of your group trying to prepare for certification. So meeting minutes, of course. Okay, um, I you know created a sample sort of a test database here to show that there's a couple different ways that information can come 
to you as a as a again fondly uh, and respectfully a foot soldier in this service, right? So whether it is something with there, there are notes about IMD generally. IMD can roll down information to you, offer you ways to stay connected with the really important happenings uh, for the organization. Click the external link to view a video of some media coverage. And similarly, at the advisory organization level, the dashboard becomes that central news and announcements place as well. So I, as a leader of, his, of an advisory organization, could actually post a note to my specific advisory organization, noting that the certification process is now open for us. We're getting ready, right? If anybody has any questions about it, naturally, I can add some little frequently asked questions bar. But of course, I'm going to be here to make sure that the specific group that I'm interested in, in viewing that information is the only one that has access to that specific announcement. So again, advisory organization specific news and announcements that are shared only with the one or two groups that you feel are uh, worthy of such, a, such an announcement. Okay, and of course, I'm going to edit this. I'm going to go ahead and make it publish. For those of you who would be potentially creating content like this, when I go ahead and publish, what is all it's going to do is make sure that I'm asked to, to notify everybody within the organization. So again, as it relates to staying connected to one another and what's happening, provided that you've either downloaded the mobile application for Onboard or are tuned to your email, when I go to notify that entire group, it is simply going to push an information out that there's a there's an announcement available for my review. Sure enough, I just got one on my on my phone. Um, and so that you're invited to come in and view the content, come into the solution and view the content. And that's really important, right? Because I know there are some folks on here who may have some questions about what, how they're, how comfortable they intend to be or expect to be using a solution like Onboard, right? So it's really important to understand that at every turn, you're going to be given opportunities to come back into the solution. And the more we come back in the solution, frankly, the more, really the more comfortable it becomes. So upcoming meetings to attend to make sure you're achieving your certification standards around attendance and around uh, execution of meetings. Shared communication that can be really boiled down and specifically geared toward one individual or one specific advisory organization. Any action, a governance action. So what, what we are looking at with Onboard is the opportunity to do some really important things around, for example, uh, for silver certification, I'm looking at the need to uh, review and, and uh, submit an annual budget for your advisory organization to the division for approval, right? So using the kinds of approval workflows here around both meeting minutes, but annual budgets in a way that is a really simple, again, on your mobile device, a two to three click process that really simplifies the, the, the ways in which you are engaging with the content. You know what's due. You know when that, in this case, this one is going to close today, right? I've got an, a, a standard organizational assessment that may close in a few weeks, right? You've got a really clear sense for what is due now in terms of the kinds of actions I can take as a volunteer to help our organization really strive toward those certification, uh, standards of excellence for certification. Okay, I know I'm sure there are plenty of questions around actions. Um, I will just say when organizations are are polling their boards around, uh, let's just say a, a consensus around a meeting date or a meeting time, maybe using Microsoft Forms or maybe using uh, SurveyMonkey or something of that sort. So there are survey tools within here. There are approval workflows within here for organizations who need to uh, sign off on documents before they arise up to the division level. Right? So there's a document signature capability within here. And then, of course, as we think about those more deeper engagements in terms of how to certify toward the gold, you know, we can actually be building within here and executing on annual board self-evaluations. If we rather, you know, whatever cadence we plan to do that on, making that available to our advisory organization members so that they're here, they're, again, in one home, in one space. And they become documented for as long as you guys deem fit. So when it comes time to start thinking about how to certify, how to submit our application for certification as an advisory organization, we've got this audit trail that lives in the same place as all the meeting attendance, right? That lives in the same place as all the meeting minutes, that lives in the same place as all of the resources and documents that allow us to stay compliant and serve, what is it? I think the language is 
advisory board or council follows the manual of uh, advisory organizations and, and articles of organizations, right? So having quick access to those documents here within our single source of truth, right? So you can start to think about all the ways that this is really gonna simplify the, the, the certification process, okay? So the only other thing I would say um, as we're starting starting to kind of turn the corner toward the end here, I can do a little bit of digging in. Um, you know, one of the questions I got in Denver was, you know, one of the things that we struggle with, Jeremy, you know, looking, wondering if there's a way for you guys to, to better document this. Um, you know, we talk in meetings about, um, you know, talking meetings about how we as individuals are contributing financially to the organization and, and starting to kind of go after other folks for, for contributions to the Salvation Army as well. Right. And of course, that aligns with the certification for National Standards of Excellence. Is your board giving? How do we know? Uh, but how do we manage the process of, 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 of garnering that understanding? Right. So that we can uh, we can adequately certify ourselves, adequately apply for that certification. So just again, we're at the dashboard page. I, as someone who comes in and I'm viewing things that are happening today, one of the things that you guys will have access to is Onboard's really, I think, pretty empower, pretty powerful task management solution. So now not only are we gathering and centralizing how you access meeting information, documents, votes, and resources, but also what tasks are dis discussed in meetings. So as I log in, I've already got here by virtue of and you'll see quickly, I've got a task to make my annual contribution. I've got a, a deadline on it that's been set. Right. But the really impressive thing is that this specific task was created while someone was taking meeting minutes during our advisory committee meeting. So you can actually jump into those meeting minutes. You can see the source for that task. But now I've got a task represented uh, as, as something that really is going to help us meaningfully certify to these national standards. But by the way, it also helps me keep keep on track keep on track with my own day-to-day -day service to the organization, whether it's certification related, of course, or not, right? So some really powerful tools here on the task management side to keep everybody at the individual level. And I will just kind of really briefly show at the individual level, or I can see what kind of group I'm serving it with uh, within the advisory organization, what subcommittee it might be related to. And I can, of course, see what's been assigned to me, maybe what's been assigned to others. If I'm the one taking notes, I can assign tasks to certain other folks. What's due today, this week, what things have been completed. So really great way to stay on task. And again, all of that really stems from, from what I'm just looking at at the dashboard, right? Because all of that really important information, those things are going to help us lead toward that certification, really can be designed and posted right here for individuals by virtue of the work that we're doing on the back end to, to, to create these workflows and make you guys have it, just, again, just right at, the, right at the palm of your fingertips. All right, cool. And I will say, as you guys are coming up with questions as we go, feel free to drop them in the chat. I can take a pause and, and turn over to them if anything is kind of jumping out at you. Um, wanted to show a few other things, because I know that um, you know as, as we think about how to build a healthy advisory organization, uh, certainly one of the areas that uh, I, I suspect would be really valuable for each of you, uh, whether you're leading an organization or just kind of participating in one, um, is how we think about how to build an advisory organization that is fitting and befitting of the communities that we're serving, right? And that often means, do we have representation across a, a subset of our community that meaningfully says to our community, we are here, we see you, we value you, we've got people on the case, who, who look and feel and have, have your experience, right? So a lot of that, when I come over to my directory and I'm gonna have a generated list of all of your advisory organization folks, everybody that is in your specific group, you're gonna notice a couple of things. When I'm looking at my specific advisory board, let's just go to my board of directors, what, what you're gonna to start to see within each group, so imagine this is a specific advisory board, I'm gonna be able to see some really important metrics around diversity right? How diverse or non-diverse is our specific board? When I drill in one more click, again, we are now two or three clicks into it. Uh, we get to see around uh, diversity around gender. How is that reflective of the communities we're serving? Diversity as it's specific to race and ethnicity, right? And we get some really important metrics because this is data that is sourced from you. So what's going to be really exciting is when we go ahead and start to implement on board at the, at the ground level, the advisory organization level, 
right? You guys are going to be asked to participate in a few surveys. And some of this demographic information is going to be one of those things you're going to be asked to complete. And that's going to allow your advisory organization to take a more holistic view like this. And it ultimately ends up being, when I go to expert di export diversity data, we can now take an output from within onboard, share that with, uh, with Intermountain Division as part of our application process that exports as, a, as an Excel file really quick and easy as long as we're managing the data and making sure all of our board members have completed those surveys that live here in onboard, we're gonna have a really simple and easy way to extract that information and share it with the division. Similarly, similarly, I'm gonna kind of zoom back here and take a look at a couple different things. Skills tracking is a great example. I wanna see specifically within my one specific advisory board, I wanna know exactly where our strengths and our weaknesses are. So because every, every one of you individual supporters and volunteers within each advisory organization is gonna be completing these surveys, you're gonna now have a holistic look at where your potential gaps and real strengths are as, as an advisory organization. And that can relate across specific skills and core competencies, finance, fundraising, audit, risk management, what have you, um, all the way to the types of board service that you've uh, you've had in other places, right? Do you have board chair experience? Because if your advisory organization thinks you're, maybe, maybe you guys would be stronger with folks who have that kind of experience on the advisory organization, that allows you to think a little bit more strategically and forward thinking about your, the succession planning for your specific board. Right, so some really exciting stuff there. And of course, uh, if you know, were I to poll this group and ask you guys to share how you guys are tracking who <laughs> and when they got on the board and when they roll off the board, uh, I suspect I'd get probably six to eight different types of responses, right? Different mechanisms for that, right? So again, at the group level, really excited to share the kinds of possibilities where I can even quite simply just get a nice graphical representation of my advisory organization. Who's in a current role? When does it start? When does it end? Who might be rolling off that, that board soon, right? So that we can be really specific in terms of how we need to approach succession planning for your organization, keep you guys healthy, keep you guys growing, and really lead toward, the, toward those certification standards around both diversity for your organization, uh, skills and core competencies for your organization, and effective management of the roles and terms to make sure that we've got a full, a vibrant and healthy, healthy advisory org. All right. Now, the last thing I maybe would say here, uh, I, I certainly one of the things I think is the most powerful thing about onboard, and this this scans this one sort of feature function I think is 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 highly appropriate whether you are just starting with an advisory organization today, and have just gotten your invitation to to join your organization with an onboard. So you click in, right? You create your permanent password. First thing I want to do, rather than just having to dig and dig and dig, I might have one quick question about looking for something specific, right? Maybe I'm looking for anything that happened within our advisory organization related to fundraising. Look at that. That one fell a little flat. Or I want to just kind of quickly find meeting minutes. I don't even know where to go. I just want to find our meeting minutes. So what Onboard is going to do for that first time, again, very this is the first day on an advisory organization board, looking for something specific, it's going to scan every document that has been created or collaborated on in your organization, every single meeting, every agenda, right? Every approval workflow and any message that may have gone back and forth with an onboard. It's going to look for every single instance of that one keyword and give you opportunities to jump into a meeting minutes document. And it'll go ahead and bookmark every instance of that note. Right, so really quick, seamless way to get to virtually anything that an, an advisory organization member might need. As a first crack at that use case, the second crack would be when it's time to do sort of an audit for ourselves as we're preparing for the certification process. And I might be a leader at the advisory level or at the division level, and I want to sort of audit the organization. Right. I can come in here and I can search for meeting minutes if I'm looking for something specific, if I'm looking for anything mentioned around fundraising, red kettle, right? And what that's gonna do at the leadership level too is, is also go through your files and do a nice, nice clear search. 
And of course I could put start and end dates on this. So this is a conversation maybe that happened as recently as December 1st of last year. Maybe it was a meeting after December 1st. I just want to restrict my search to that. Again, it's going to start starting from December 1, 2023, any document, any part of Onboard that exists, any search will, will scan the entire thing. So we call that our intelligent search capability because it really is intelligent. Might be familiar to those of you who maybe go to work with Google Drive, for example, or Microsoft SharePoint, if that's a thing for you. And you can type some keywords and it'll kind of trickle through the, the various files and elements of that uh, to try and search the content of those documents. All right. But listen, I, uh, I I didn't want to take too much time of everyone's time today. I did want to leave a little bit of time for uh, for FAQ. Uh, let's see. Let me go back over here to the questions. Can we include attachments on an announcement? Um, on an announcement? Uh, no. Well, let me let me back up. I mean, so a couple of things you can include in the announcements might be this might be in this case, you know, I'm, I'm posting to my advisory org that we've got certifications that open what this link will do is going to take me to an external link. Of course, I've linked it to our advisory org hub, right? So that's one option. The other option actually would be to link it to a document that exists within our resources library, right? So if I, as I come in here, I go to my resources information, let's go maybe fact sheets, right? And so because it's a cloud-based solution, I think this is actually really important to understand. Uh, this unique link, if I provided this as part of linking that initial, in fact, you know, let's, let's go ahead and do it. It's a quick fix. So let's just say, for example, I wanted to edit this. I didn't want to go to frequently asked questions page, but what I'm actually doing is linking to that document within Onboard. Of course, I don't need to notify anybody that that's changed. But now when I go to click on that link, it's not an attachment, but it is a link back to that document. So in effect, operates as, as seamlessly as, as an attachment. But again, remember, the, one of the really important parts of Onboard is the security measures in place around it. Right, so being able to link within the solution after we've all securely logged into Onboard and you guys, as I understand it, will all be asked to participate in, in a single sign-on kind of a workflow to get into Onboard. But once you do so, we're making sure that we're linking to everything that exists within the solution, keeping everything here and secure. But also I, I hope you found that to be a pretty, pretty seamless uh, and easy workflow. Let's see, I'm gonna, it looks like, thank you, Evan, for responding to Robert. Da, da, da. Yeah, so um, I want to make sure I clarify something on the on the onboard app. Um, actually, you know what? Let's stick a pin in that because I do want to kind of just part of my presentation today is just to help everybody understand kind of where we are today. Like, where are we? What can I expect to see as we continue to do the rollout? Um, I'll talk through some of the discussions that have happened, but I would say um, we're we're still probably a few weeks away from rolling out licenses to every individual board member. When we do so you'll be asked to create your login information at that time. And that's what you can use to, to, to sign into the mobile app. So we're a little ahead of the game on that bill, but I really appreciate uh, you jumping in to check it out. Excellent. Oh, that was Robin, I'm sorry, Robin. <clears throat> All right. Well, that is fundamentally sort of the, the, the crux of one I wanted to show you guys today. Again, um, you know, at some point, you know, you guys will start to receive training around all these various things, but just know it's, it's okay. Okay. Sorry, Bill. I've got you. Um, thanks for the question though. Uh, but just know, I mean, I'll give you a kind of a quick overview, right. Of what we're actually looking at here. The dashboard comes your landing place as I need to kind of plug into the meetings that we are participating in, in the future or, or, Frankly, retroactively, I can go back and look at meeting minutes as I visit the meetings tab, right? Governance actions we talked about. Um, notifications, again, really important. When I go to make any small adjustment to something or I add a new piece of content or I add a new document, right? I'm given an opportunity in that moment to decide I wanna notify the relevant group or I don't wanna notify. And that notification is what ends up pushing a, a, a notification to your phone, okay? It pushes the notification into your email. So those are two places. If somehow you've managed to ignore both, which is certainly feasible. Uh, when you log into Onboard, you'll get a nice little red bell right here, a little red dot that says, hey, you've got a notification, come on in. It'll guide you around specifically to what you need to pay attention to. So in this case, 
all it is is about announcing an, an, uh, an announcement, updating an announcement, or it'll jump right back into the dashboard. Could be something like you're invited to vote on something, right? So you'd have that in your notification, or you've been invited to a meeting. It would be in your notifications. Unlimited storage for resources. Uh, we're going to be working with the leadership team, right, to really determine the right sort of permission sets and levels for every individual. So that's something that's a conversation that's starting now. But just know that when you log into Onboard, when, when that time comes, you're going to be presented with a, with a series of resources here that are going to be specific to your organization or things that are relevant to the advisory organization structure on the whole. Right. So board meetings might be restricted specifically or board meeting materials restricted specifically to your organization. Right. But certification, I'm sorry, uh, resources for advisory organizations, that is a that is a, a global effort to bring insight into all the different ways to, to really enhance your advisory organization. So that would be something that's shared on a, on a global level, just for example. All right. We talked about those tasks. Uh, we didn't talk about Messenger, something I think is, is a really handy way to get rid of email or text, especially around really important governance matters. So this offers a way to self-contain a discussion that might be happening within the solution with a select group of folks. Right, in this case, I've opened up the entire conversation to my fundraising committee, and that entire committee now can participate in this one chat. So a great way to talk about uh, planning for an upcoming uh, planning for an upcoming event, or um, you know, rallying around a specific uh, crisis innovation invention cause in, in your community, Some, something like that. All right, logical process for me to work with from my board. Yeah, um, you know, and I and I suspect every board is is going to function a little bit differently. I, I uh, but to answer your question, Bill, you know, will we get a list uh, list from onboard on steps to get certified? The the steps come really from the Salvation Army, right? Those are the steps. Onboard is just the structure by which you execute on those steps, right? So I would certainly advise, you know, if I if I'm someone who's leading an advisory organization. You know, I might go ahead and, and, and put those steps as a, as a sorry, I go down to my resources. Um, in fact, you know what I might actually do as a, as a leader of an advisory organization? I might add a panel. I might add a resource panel. And I might just purely name that, right, uh, certification um, FAQ or, or something like that or, or resources. Right. And then within that, I would include the manual. I would include, you know, the specific subset of items. I'll just kind of work back here. Something that actually, right, lays this out for each organization. Um, and I will share with each of you that when it comes to tracking progress against each of these, leadership is going to be able to create sort of a sort of an internal assessment workflow within Onboard to kind of track that stuff. But you guys will work. I mean, you, you'll, you'll find your own rhythms to do this. But But I would say in terms of Getting a list of the certification steps, I would I would continue to rely on Salvation Army and Intermountain Division to guide you on that. Just leveraging onboard as a tool to make that happen. Yeah, no, great, great question, Bill. Absolutely. So with the few minutes we have left, um, just want to kind of give you guys a sense for what where we are today, um, what you can expect in terms of training and those kinds of things going forward. Uh, this I hope hope Bill and answers a few extra questions. Um, thank you, Evan. Yeah, so will training on session three four be available for those who cannot attend that day? Yeah, we record we record just about every training session, every webinar like this. Um, so I suspect if you're unable to attend on three four, yes, that that would be recorded. We'll we'll make sure to verify that, and we'll make sure the team is is clear that that should be something that can be recorded. Though, thank you for that, Sue. All right. So again, just in terms of what the journey looks like, you, you know, in terms of in adoption and engagement, you know, that's probably about two two months out or so. The implementation process is happening now. Hopefully, you guys feel great about adopting it. You're getting the training you need. You're starting to use it, really feeling engaged, and plugged in with your team. Uh, and and as always, you know, we we look for advocates for onboard. You know, share share the love outward and have a lot of kind of mechanism feedbacks for that. Help you participate in the development of the product. Help um, you know. Help you introduce to folks that you care about and uh, maybe want to share on board with. But but really, we're in this implementation phase. We've sort of gotten the project kicked off. So we've had with with division leadership, 
you know, make sure we've reviewed the current challenges, the kind of framework around which this should be built and made easy for you guys to access. Certainly talked about all the goals and objectives and, and um, you know, success metrics that, that need to be in place to help you guys feel like this is a, a valuable tool for you all, right? So project kicked off kind of in the bag. We are now in the process and I would expect for the next few weeks, working with division leadership on the administrative, just sort of the back end, you know, getting the foundation set for onboard, right? So that makes sure, making sure we have all the organizational settings in place, right? We've got a project team in place, which may start to grow as we start to think about bringing other advisory organizations into the mix. Um, we're gonna have a lot of conversations around making sure that permissioning and access rights is 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 really the, just the right fit for you guys, making sure that all the resources are available and, all, and may, everyone's clear on the tools, right? So that's kind of where we are now. Again, I would expect that to be probably another uh, two or three weeks to kind of get a lot of those nuts and bolts uh, in place. Once we are comfortable kind of getting past that stage is when we start to really bring you guys all into it, right? And that's gonna happen a couple of ways. Obviously we're gonna get everybody's accounts created at one point and that may happen in stages depending on which advisory organizations are kind of uh, stepping up to get this rolling first, but starting to roll those invitations out to onboard making sure uh, folks like Bill are, are downloading and installing the mobile app, right? Making sure people are understanding how to access different things, getting the right training, developing and working through an adoption plan so that you guys all feel empowered. You guys have the right resources and tools and you've, you've had the onboard kind of at your side with the various training elements that we introduced into the implementation process. So you're feeling great about it, right? You're using the actions. You're really starting to get in there using and annotating some of the meeting notes so you can kind of share and collaborate there, making the most use of the resources folder, right? So that'll happen through mid to maybe late March. And I would say by April 1st would be a really great opportunity to, to get this thing launched. I think that's kind of tacitly what we're all sort of striving for to make sure that everybody's up, everybody's loaded into the system, everybody's been logged in, has access to it. And from that point, we can start to kind of track, track success metrics that we've kind of laid out for ourselves kind of milestones along the adoption journey to make sure people are feeling great about it. Making sure you guys all have access to best practices um, and are being given opportunity to, to for feedback that you're accessing the support channels that are available to you, which are available 24 seven, right? So it's it's uh, it's coming down the road. Uh, we're really really excited to be to be partnering you guys, and um, you know we want to make sure that this this goes really really great from the start. So we're relying on on uh, folks like yourselves to attend sessions like this to get excited about it, uh, but but to use us to really lean on on board as a as a partner in the process to helping you guys feel really great about uh, what what we're providing to you and what uh, what the division has invested in to make sure that your advisory organizations are running running great. <laughs> All right. And just to kind of reinforce again, 24 seven support, regular check-ins, we'll be, you know, training along the way when new product, you know, things come out. Um, and we just announced, I think it was two months ago, really sort of a self-guided onboard academy of training. So there's a, there's a various pathways within there that once, you know, once we are kind of prepared to roll that out and start to get people access to training, which I would have expect in the next few weeks, uh, plenty of opportunities to plug into those resources and get all the information you need, get you excited about getting started. All right. Well, guys, I uh, am grateful to have all of you join us today. Um, are there any are there any sort of remaining questions that sort of linger here? I've got a I've got a few minutes available if we need to sort of either jump back into the solution, tackle any specific questions. I would say perhaps uh, my friends at Onboard now might be a good opportunity just to throw that poll up again. If if you guys are sort of in this right and getting prepared to implement Onboard. Um, I guess you can sort of feel free to, to leave this aside, but maybe a good opportunity to provide some some feedback. But certainly if you're joining us, um, you know, from outside the Intermountain Division and really are curious about maybe getting a personalized demo, interested in, in maybe tackling this with a free trial to see, kind of touch and feel it and get the, get the experience yourself, uh, we certainly would be happy to offer those opportunities up. Just fill out this quick poll, give some quick feedback. See, I'm not seeing any other questions here in the chat, which either means I have ruthlessly confused everybody or done an excellent job. 
and we're feeling great. I'll tell you what, put, put in the chat if this if this uh, excites you, if this makes you a little nervous. Maybe if anybody has used anything before, it might be good to know as well. Maybe let's do it this way. Only only post if you're excited. <laughs> All right. Okay. Awesome. Well, guys, listen. I again, thank you so much for joining me. Um, you know, we will. Uh, we've absolutely recorded this session. Uh, we're happy to provide a recording, a recording of this. Uh, you're welcome to share with your team and your peers. Um, Robin's excited at the idea of simple communication. We can always use more simple communication in our lives. Um, you know, it's funny, quick, quick story. I mean, if, is there anybody who doesn't use text messaging or is there anyone who doesn't use Facebook? I mean, I'm going to, I'll go ahead and assume that answer is no. Um, and we are just so accustomed to, to picking up our mobile device and responding to important things in our lives, right? Text messages, maybe a Facebook post from our niece or nephew or our, you know, brother, sister, mother, friends, family, um, and responding to that, right? So that's, just know that that's what you can expect, especially with the mobile app. Right, the notifications bring you into the discussion. The, the notifications bring you into the document or into the meeting in a way that is just a pick up your phone, click on the notification, let your face do the work to sign you in, uh, and, and then you're into your advisory organization tool. Right, I think that's the biggest takeaway at how simple this is going to make your lives. I, I'm really, really excited for you all. Um, we are excited to be. Um, a, a growing partner to the Salvation Army. You know, I am IMD typically is a trailblazer, uh, and we're we're excited to be a part of it. So, guys, thank you all so much. Um, I will let me just do this really quickly. I'm just going to go ahead and type my email address in here, and I encourage anyone who's got any questions um, to go ahead and shoot me an email. Love to connect with you there. Uh, if anything kind of comes to mind in the, in the waning days, but. Uh, with that, we'll give everyone the rest of their Wednesday back. Appreciate seeing you all. Thanks so much for your uh, your support for the Salvation Army. We're excited to be a part of it and look forward to uh, a great experience for you all. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.